It's time to hippity hop into some spring and Easter DIYs that are super budget friendly. Let's go. Let's kick this video off with a fresh new DIY. Grab your favorite tumbler. It does not matter the brand and you wanna grab yourself some elastic, printed elastic at that, because since December, I have been trying to come up with a fun way to make a water tracker, and I have finally figured it out. So grab yourself some spring tiny elastic. I'm gonna go with this pink one with the gold hearts. And then you are also gonna need some sliders. I got all of this stuff from Amazon. You guys know I always link everything down below, so just check the description box. I did take those white ones out and spray paint them gold so that it would match my pretty elastic. And then you're also gonna need a buckle. This buckle is white. I do take it outside to spray paint it and I make it gold. I did seal it. I don't know how it will hold up, but I will definitely report back whether or not you can actually spray paint these just because of the clipping, you know, opening and closing. So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna take your sliders. Now each slider obviously represents one uh, tumbler full of water. And so you put however many you want on there, whatever your daily goal is, put that amount of sliders on there. I'm gonna put four on mine. And then from there, I'm ready to attach my buckles. So what you wanna do is on one end, I am using my lighter to burn it. And I do apologize, my hands are slightly out of focus because my camera was focusing on the top of my cup. Um, but you wanna attach your buckle to one end. Now you could do a couple different ways to do this. I would not recommend hot glue just because it will make it bulky. You could use some fabric glue. You could sew it if you wanted to. I am just using some Loctite uh, super gel glue and I'm gonna do that. So once I put that down, my piece of elastic for this 40 ounce Stanley cup ended up being about 11 inches. So if you decide to make this for it, start at 11 inches because essentially you wanna wrap it around. You don't wanna pull it to where it's super stretched tight, but you don't want it to be loose and sliding up and down and falling all over the place. So about 11 inches is where you will want to cut your elastic. To finish this water tracker off, um, I'm doing this because I know how my brain works. So this is a tiny little gold bow button. It's got a little loop at the top of it and the loop at the bottom. I took a small, I mean, tiny little amount of Loctite glue just to secure this bow to the elastic. And then using some gold thread, I'm stitching this bow on. And the reason being is because I know for a fact, if I get going in my day, I will forget which way I'm sliding these things to let me know. Like I might slide three to one side and then I'll go back the other way and I just know that it's just not gonna work for me. So by sliding these sliders to the bow, I will know that those are the ones that I have drank and I'm good to go. And so that way I can keep track of it very, very easily. But yeah, you could make so many different ones for so many different seasons. There are a lot of fun printed elastics out there, so yeah. I am super excited, and like I said, you can size these to any tumbler, but if you happen to have a 40 ounce Stanley, this is 11 inches. So yeah, let me know if you decide to make this, and I would love to see your designs. For this spring floral DIY, I grabbed a three pack of these wreath hoops from Dollar Tree, picked the wreath hoop I wanted along with grabbing that wooden block from Dollar Tree and needed to get that ring secured. So to do that, I decided to use tumbling tower blocks. These just happened to be stained in my stash. I hot glued those down and that stabilized my round wreath form onto that wooden cube. From there, I grabbed some of these Dollar Tree fairy lights that had the green leaves on it, and I wrapped it all the way around the wreath form. Once that was done, it was time to add the florals. And I've talked about my glue skillet before, it just makes it so easy. So I just dipped my little florals into the glue skillet, attached them where I wanted it to go, and then this really pretty little table springtime centerpiece is ready to be displayed. Here's
here's an easy Easter themed candle holder. Grab two wooden planks and stain them or paint them your color of choice. Once they are dry, I grabbed this white ceramic egg and using some clear grip glue by Gorilla Glue, I attached the egg and then used some painter's tape just to make sure that this would secure and hold on tight to that egg. Once it dried overnight for at least 24 hours, I did add some half round wooden beads to the bottom just to lift it up a little bit, attach those with some glue, also stain those, and then this candle holder was finished. If you are needing to give any little spring themed gifts to anybody, definitely consider this DIY. It's so simple. Grab one of these little burlap bags from Dollar Tree and all you need to do is find a really pretty spring themed ribbon. Now I grabbed my little floral ribbon from Hobby Lobby and I just attached it to this bag using some fabric glue that I had in my stash. I did a little bit at the top to kind of trim it out and then added a cute little bow and voila, you've dressed this bag up and it will just make giving a little gift at springtime a little extra special. You might remember from my craft tool video that I had gotten a new mug and tumbler press. This is from HTV Ront. It's their auto press. It came with gloves, tape, and this is my first time using it, so I'm so excited. So what I did is I adjusted the temperature that I'm gonna need this set on, which is really nice. You just click in the temperature, you put in the time, let it heat up, and now I'm gonna pull together this cute little tumbler that I'm gonna put with that cute Easter gift bag. So I am gonna do a sublimation tumbler. I love this because it comes with a straw and a cleaning brush for the straw. But what I did is I found this really cute design this whole set of animals, y'all, the design was so cute. I will link it down below. There are 54 images of these and I printed it out on some sublimation paper. Then taking my tumbler, making sure it was totally cleaned off and there weren't fingerprints all over, I used the heat resistant tape. Do not use regular scotch tape when you are doing sublimation. You've got to have heat resistant. I wrapped it around my tumbler, secured it with that heat tape, and then took it over to the tumbler press to pop it in. So this was super easy. I just simply put on the gloves that were included with the heat tumbler press, slid it in, hit the button, and it did its thing. It closed up on it, it did its thing, it timed off. When it's done, you wanna make sure you pull it out. It's completely cool, and then pull off the paper, and how cute is this little bunny? Now, you definitely, if you don't have a sublimation printer and you don't have that, you can definitely use this with some of the HTV, the iron-on vinyls that you might put on a mug. You can definitely work around not having sublimation tools, but. My first go around with this press, I love it. So I will definitely link it down below if you are looking for a mug or tumbler press. This is just a great little tool to have for those quick little DIY gifts. to make a really cute garland. So you wanna grab these two different wood slices from Dollar Tree. You want some of the oval ones. Try to get them about the same size if you can. And then you'll need some circle ones as well. And then you wanna grab some black paint and give them a good coat of black paint. You definitely could take these outside and spray paint them if you choose. Now, you wanna take your hot glue gun and what we are making are some little teardrop shapes. These are gonna be wings. So in case you haven't figured out, what we're making here is a bee garland, but we want our wings to be a little more realistic. I've done this hack before using hot glue as wings for a bee and I just love how it looks. This is why working on silicone mat is great because I can just literally do it on the mat and then peel it off. I will link this one down below, the mats that I like to use. So you wanna make 10 total wings with your hot glue. 
it's time to start assembling the bees. So I am using some black hot glue because originally I thought I was going to just kind of glue the two pieces like together touching, but I realized it wouldn't be very stable. So I needed to overlap the head onto the little black body. So I had already heated up this black hot glue. I, you know, you don't need to use black hot glue is what I'm trying to say here. Uh, get the heads attached. And then once you get those done, you want to paint your yellow stripes. Pick whatever color yellow you want. And I just kind of freehanded it and added two stripes to each of my bee bodies. While the bees were drying, I grabbed some of these multicolored beads, which came from Dollar Tree. And I fished out 12, not of the smallest bead, kind of the medium yellow beads. And then I also had this white beaded garland from Dollar Tree with this little rainbow thing. And I took off six of the white beads and then I strung it up on some, uh, twine and I just did a pattern of yellow white yellow a little grouping of three and then yellow white yellow and continued to do that to get that ready for when I attached my bees. We're almost about to cross the finish line with this project so I needed to get the wings attached and to do that I just took the wings kind of placed them at an angle and just hot glued them to the back of each uh, bee kind of right at the base of where the head is. Once those were nice and attached, I decided, hey, these need little antennas. So I had some black wire and I just grabbed a piece, folded it in half, and then used a pencil to kind of make them curly cue. I wasn't, I don't know, the antenna are a little crazy looking if you ask me, but I think that makes it kind of fun. So uh, you might want to make yours more realistic. I don't know. Or maybe you want to make crazy bees like I made. Once those get attached with a little bit of hot glue on the back of the heads, I was ready to get the bees attached. And it was really simple. I simply just flipped them over and then just hot glued on the head kind of right underneath where the antenna had been attached and just push the beads up against each one, continue to do that all the way down the line. And then this was ready to be hung up. For this Dollar Tree DIY, I'll be using this wood blank sign and this pack of flowers that came from Hobby Lobby. Y'all, they were $1.99, 40% off, which comes in way cheaper than uh, Dollar Tree and you get several of each design. So I picked the flowers. Originally, I was going to do this whole paint thing and then um, I decided it's going to start morphing into kind of a shabby chic little sign here. So once I picked out my flowers, I ended up doing a total of six flowers. I started by painting the stems and I opted to do three of them kind of a lighter shade of green and then three of them with a darker green. Then I went in and just accented on each one with the opposite color. If that makes sense. So I, on the ones that were painted with the light, I used the dark green to kind of just go in and do some swoopy swipes. And then I did the same for the dark green, went in with the light green and did some swoopy swipes. I did paint each of these with some cream colored paint just because this ribbon that I had, it was wasn't quite like burlap ribbon, but there were little holes. And if you set it on top of the flower, you could see those black details kind of coming through. So that is why I painted them. Once I did that, I just used each flower and traced it onto the ribbon, cut that out, and then just used a glue stick to get those little pieces of floral ribbon attached to the flowers. To finish this off, I did add an assortment of brownish colored buttons that I had in my stash to the center of each flower, just attach those with some hot glue. Then I gl hot glued down all of the flowers. I had thought about putting a little bit of text at the top of the flower, something like bloom where you are planted or some type of springy something or other up there, but I just opted to leave it plain. And then to finish it off, I just added a, uh, button to each of the corners just to kind of tie it all together. And then this sign was ready to either be hung up or you could put it on the counter wherever you'd like, but a cute little shabby chic spring sign. a really cute spring DIY that I made when I did the crafter versus crafter challenge with Bethany. I started with this wooden plaque from Dollar Tree, some truffle Waverly chalk paint and voila, just like that, I painted it with that paint. Then taking one of the bunny butt silicone molds from Dollar Tree, I filled it in with some hot glue, set that aside and let those dry to set up. 
From there, taking some of the little wooden carrots from Dollar Tree, I painted them, guess what, orange and green, go figure, and set those aside to dry. Then it was time to get my bunnies and paint them. So I started by painting them white, and then I went in with some gray for the bunny, and then some pink for the little details on the paws or feet of the bunny. Now, you know me and my little 3D elements, so I had to take those carrots and add a little something extra to them. To do that, I just took some greenery, pulled little leaves off and hot glued those down to the carrots. It was then time to get ready to assemble my scene. To get this sign all wrapped up, I placed the bunnies down so that I knew where I wanted my carrots to go, grabbed the carrots and I trimmed off the tips with my miter shears to make it look like the carrots were growing out of the ground. Everything in today's video will be linked down below. You can check the description box if you have any questions. Once the carrots were ready to go, I hot glued those down. And then I also took some Dollar Tree moss hot glued that down. And then I wanted to make sure that the bunnies were secure. So I just used hot glue on that as well and added some of these half wood round beads to the bottom to kind of lift it. Then for the sign, I'm using some of this black sticker paper from Dollar Tree and a wooden plank from Dollar Tree. I just measured out the size of the wood plank, put the sticker on there and grabbed a Sharpie paint pen and just wrote carrots for sale, turned it into a nice little sign and attached it to this little scene. And now it's ready to be displayed. This Dollar Tree DIY is going to be using this sign and a bunny and carrot garland also from Dollar Tree. I started by taking some white paint and I painted it on the brown portion of the sign just to get a whole distressed look. Once that was done, I grabbed the garland and I wasn't quite sure what part of this I wanted to use. So I played around with it for a little while and decided, okay, I'm gonna use the three bunnies cause there was an orange, a pink and a purple bunny in there. And I hot glued those down directly to the sign. Then I took some of these stickers that I got from Hobby Lobby quite a while ago. They were uh, pink chevron little stickers and I pulled the letters to say happy Easter, but I'm actually going to end up changing this in just a minute. Now, each of my bunnies needed a little something added to it. So I just grabbed some of this white ribbon that I had and tied little bows, hot glued those directly to each of the bunnies. Then taking some green moss that came from Dollar Tree, I hot glued that along the bottom as well and just put it around kind of the bunny's paws, not trying to cover up the whole bottom of the bunny, but just kind of filling in all those little gaps on the bottom. To finish this little sign off, I grabbed this little wooden tray. I actually got this last year. There's a couple of Dollar Tree ones, these big eggs on top. But the rest of these little embellishments came from Hobby Lobby last year. And I decided, okay, I need to add some of these into this sign. So what I ended up ultimately doing here was I took the Happy Easter wooden ones and I hot glued that to the purple bunny. So that's why those Happy Easter sticker ended up coming off. And then I decided on the carrots. And of course, I just painted those orange and green and then hot glued those down. And then this sign was ready to be hung up with your spring decor. These wooden pieces and house sign from Dollar Tree are going to be the star of this DIY. To get started, I took the house and traced it out on a piece of this floral fabric that I got from Hobby Lobby. I used some fabric Mod Podge to get that attached. I grabbed some of these wooden pieces that I had in my stash. These are also from Dollar Tree and one of these little wooden planks also from Dollar Tree. And I wanted enough sticks basically to kind of, uh, I'm making like a little container. So three of the sides are gonna have these wood sticks attached to it. Once I got out and figured out how many sticks I needed, I took three tumbling tower blocks and I hot glued those to the edge of the wood plank and then secured my house to those. So that way I knew my house would be on there nice and sturdy. Now it was time to get my wooden sticks secured together. So to do that, I took some popsicle sticks that I trimmed down, used some hot glue and just kind of stuck it in the middle across all of the sticks for all three of the sides. 
When those were all secure, I was ready to attach these to that wooden plank. So I just took some hot glue and I ran it along the bottom of the wood plank, kind of stuck the side on there and again, did it for all three sides to give it a little extra security. I went onto the inside of this little fenced container looking thing and used some tumbling towers blocks to attach to the wood sticks along with the base of the wood plank. <laughs> Hopefully that's not too confusing. To finish off the house construction, I wanted to add these wood rounds to the top. I just liked how it looked. It gave it kind of a whole little cottage vibe using those to make the roof. The final step was just to take some of this little greenery that I had. I made a little wreath, attached a little bow and stuck that on there. And then now this is going to be a cute little container that can hold some springtime treats. You could put it if you work in your office, you could put it in your kitchen, you could give it to a teacher, you could give it to the front staff at your kid's school, what have you, but you can fill it with some really fun springtime candies. This little sign is the star of this DIY. So I did start by breaking down the front of the sign. I really only needed uh, one of the, the, or the happiness is homemade, that part of it, but I did pop the pig off, flipped it over to the back. I did want this to look like wood. So I did score along where the pickets would be and kind of make a groove so that when I went in and painted it with white paint, it would look like pieces of wood. Then the little happiness and the homemade part that I popped off the front, I did cover them with some real fun floral scrapbook paper. I want to add a carrot to the sign. So using this glittery shamrock, I'm taking one of the leaves and the stem off of this, and then I'm cutting them in half so it's a little bit thinner. So how am I going to make this look like a carrot? Well, I'm going to cover it in fabric because let's be honest, nobody wants to paint over glitter, especially glitter on styrofoam. I don't even know if that's even, no. We just don't want to do that. So to do that, I'm going to take some of this orange fabric. It came from Dollar Tree in the Crafter Square section. And I'm going to cover this little clover part. Uh, not Well, yeah, it's the clover leaf with the fabric. I did end up kind of wadding up a little bit of fabric in that open space so that it wasn't, I don't know. I don't know if it's necessary. If you have fluff, you could put some fluff in there too. Um, but I just used hot glue to get it nice and secure. Did the same thing for the little stem part of the carrot. I used this green polka dot fabric. Now that came from Hobby Lobby. It's some I had in my stash. Again, secured it with some hot glue and I glued this down to kind of the bottom portion of the sign. So what it's gonna look like is just the top of the carrot poking out from the ground. Now to finish this sign off, and you might remember, I glued down a little bunny butt to it. I added some beads to the hanger. That piece that I covered with scrapbook paper is gonna go up at the top, and then also some lights. So these lights, were I, this whole DIY was actually from a mystery box, and they blink red, so I turned that into like a little alarm system and made some little signs with some of the little Dollar Tree gardening um, picks that they have that you can get and got those secured down, made a little ribbon for the carrot and it was a whole little scene and I think it actually turned out really, really cute. For this one, I grabbed a wood round that I had in my stash that I believe originally came from Amazon. And then I painted it black and I grabbed a essential stencils to put on it. Here's a hack about stencils. Just because the stencil looks like this doesn't mean you actually have to use the full design. So when you have a stencil, don't just think, oh, that's the only design I can get out of it because you can look at a stencil and say, oh, I only wanna use the words from this or, oh, I only wanna use the flowers. So you can get multi uses out of a stencil and have a ton of different designs with just one stencil, if that makes sense. And that's what I'm doing here. So it took me a minute to figure out what I wanted to do, but I decided in the end that I wanted to use the words I wanted to use the leaves and I guess just the actual little line of the circle going around, but the flowers, I decided instead of stenciling those, I was going to attach some, some flowers that I got from Hobby Lobby, 
with some hot glue. So I taped down my stencil, covered up the flowers, used some white paint, and then I was ready to grab my flowers to get those attached. You could add a hanger to this if you wanted to. You could add greenery. You could have gone in and done multicolors. You know, if you wanted to do the leaves green, maybe you made the sign white instead and did a different color, but lots of options. I just decided to kind of use it as a piece that you could set in a stand and just put on your counter. But I absolutely love how it turned out. So just remember when you look at a stencil, just because it's one design, you actually can get a ton of different design uses out of one stencil. Time to make some Dollar Tree bunny themed coasters. So you want to start with some of this Dollar Tree white rope. You could use the nautical rope as well if you wanted to make some little brown bunnies. And you're just going to start by taking a bunch of hot glue, securing as you go, wrapping it around and continuing to wrap it around until you get the size you want. You kind of have to look at your cups and figure out, okay, what size cups am I going to be placing on this? That's kind of what I did. Once you get the actual head done, then it's time for the ears. So you're just going to make these kind of like, I don't know, loopy doobies. That's a technical term. We're just gonna call them loopy doopies and then secure it in the middle really well with glue and then make another little loopy doopy, trim it, and then just kind of, unf I kind of unfrayed the end of it and just secured it to the head um, of this bunny. Now working on the silicone mat was really helpful in a project like this because the glue just peels right off and it doesn't stick. So uh, definitely highly recommend making sure whatever surface you're working on here will allow you to continue to use the glue and not have your project stick all the time. Once that was done, I did take this outside and I sprayed it with Scotch Guard. Um, now for the head, I did use some cream felt just to put on the back of it. And then for the ears, I used some pink. Now, when I pulled these out this year, I went ahead and sprayed it again with some of that Scotch guard. That's just going to protect it. Keep mildew from getting on it. All the things I will link down below if I can find it, the one that I like to use. And just like that, you've got some really cute bunny coasters. The sign for this project came from Hobby Lobby on clearance. I took it outside, sanded off the letters, and then this is where I was at when I was ready to do the next step. I wanted to put this cute fabric that I got from Walmart on this little sign. So what I did is I grabbed a pencil and I just traced around the edge because it was kind of this like pie pan edging on it. And I just used scissors, trimmed a little bit, stuck it back in there, trimmed it until I got it to where I knew it would fit inside. To get the fabric circle attached, I took some spray adhesive. Now, my preferred uh, spray adhesive is the Gorilla Glue one. I absolutely love that one because it's repositionable yet super sturdy, but I had this one from Hobby Lobby. And so that is what I used. And I just sprayed that all over my wood round. And then I placed my fabric down on top and just smoothed it out. For the base of this cake stand, display stand, whatever you want to call it, I grabbed some of this folk art paint in the color Fire Coral, and I'm painting this candlestick that I had picked up from Goodwill quite a while ago, made it look like this, and now I'm just reusing it again. I painted it until it got full coverage, but this color matched exactly the little bunny flowers on my fabric, so I was kind of excited about that. Then on the tray, I decided the silver, I don't know, I wasn't really loving the corrugated silver around it. It was just kind of, I don't know what it was. It just, I didn't like it. So I took some of this lace that came from Hobby Lobby that I had in my stash and I tacked it down. I hot glued it, wrapped it around and then tacked it in another spot just to kind of break up all that silver. After looking at the candlestick, I realized, you know what? It's too coral. I need to break that up. So I took my fan brush and some white paint and I distressed it to kind of break up all that color, the coral, sorry. And then I really liked how it looked after I did that. The last thing I did was get the candlestick attached to the little tray. I just used Gorilla Clear Grip glue, got it attached, let it sit for 24 hours to dry. And then this little tray was ready to go.
Next up, you're going to head to Home Depot and find yourself a wood round. We're going to make a Lazy Susan. Home Depot has two different sizes, the smaller size and then, of course, this larger circle that you can pick up. And you'll need to grab yourself some of the Lazy Susan 6-inch hardware. I started by taking my wood round. I did give it a light sanding on the top and then again using that fire coral paint. I am giving it a good coat of paint. I grabbed a stencil from Essential Stencils, taped it down, and then stenciled away with some white paint, making sure that that got nice and dry. Once it was dry, I flipped it over and attached my Lazy Susan hardware along with some little felt pads to put in the corners. You'll need four of those because you don't want this to scratch up your table and those pads also help stabilize the lazy susan and then finally you definitely want to seal it with some type of poly and make sure you let that dry but you guys know i love making lazy susans and this is what we did at pinners we taught people how to make these and it's just a great little quick diy gift idea for weddings for housewarmings so lots of options for this diy found these coasters at my local thrift store, took them outside and spray painted them, let them dry really good and decided to add some fun Easter themed transfers. I still love essential stencils transfers. I've been using them for a little over a year. They are by far my most favorite, easiest to work with. I applied my transfers very easily to the coasters and then took a, a coat of Mod Podge to seal it because I want to make sure these were nice and good to go. And that's it. This was a very simple, quick, easy DIY. This is a great DIY for a tiered tray or even just a little accent piece. Start with one of these cloches. I decided to paint the base kind of a spring color. I'm just using a green here. Once I get that done, I grabbed three of the Dollar Tree carrots and I hot glued them together to make them nice and secure. To finish off my little carrot bundle, I just took some raffia and I tied it around there and then added a little bit of moss to the bottom of my cloche just by using some good old hot glue. Once that moss was down on the bottom, I secured my carrots in there again with a little bit of hot glue, put the topper back on, and then this piece was ready to go. Now this DIY is gonna have a super fun element added to it. So I started with one of these mini clay pots from Dollar Tree and I painted it with some of this really pretty lavender colored paint. You could use yellow or pink, just depending on your florals. I did want the color to match my florals. Also have some of these really schnazzy rhinestone butterflies from Dollar Tree. I took some of this metallic gold spray paint and gave them a zap of that paint. Once those were all painted, I came back inside and grabbed some foam, stuck it in my pot, and then started to put my florals into the pot. Now it was time to work with the butterflies. So to get it, making it look like the little butterflies were flitting around the flowers, I had some gold wire and I hot glued that to the back of a butterfly. And then I took another one and just sandwiched that wire so that it would look nice on both sides and also secure to that wire. Stuck those inside of the pot. And then for the finishing touch, I didn't want to use moss here. I decided to go with some of the white rocks from Dollar Tree. And then that was it. I really love the little extra element of these little butterflies flying around. I think it makes it look super cute. Thank you. This DIY is one of my most favorite spring DIYs to date. I started with one of these wooden canvases from the Dollar Tree Plus section, and I grabbed some Minwax stain in the color Dark Walnut and stained the frame portion of it. And then I painted the inside of it with some white paint. I jumped into Cricut Design Space. Now, if you want a more detailed description of how I cut the vinyl and the chipboard for this, I will link the original video down below in the description box, along with everything else you see in today's video. 
I painted the chipboard glasses with some pink paint. I love that these are going to be a 3D element off of this sign. I applied the bunny head to the sign and then hot glued down the glasses. I decided that I wanted to remove the flowers that were part of the bunny. So I just used my hobby knife to kind of cut that and remove that my weeding tool to help me out as well. And then I applied some florals that I had in my stash just by using some hot glue. I just thought again, that whole 3D element really made the sign. And then that was it. I left it like this and I absolutely love it. This is definitely a five minute DIY, maybe a seven minute DIY. You need to grab eight wooden beads, four sets of two. So each set of two is gonna be the same size, big to small, up to you how big you wanna make your carrot, just as long as you end up with eight beads. Once you've got those beads, you need to grab some wire and thread your carrots on to the wire. I started by just kind of bending the end of the wire, putting some hot glue, putting the bead, and then each bead that I placed, I squirted a little hot glue and slid the bead on it. Then I trimmed off the extra wire. I took some orange paint and gave it a nice coat of that orange paint. And to finish it off, I added some greenery for the stem just by squirting some hot glue in there and shoving the greenery into it. I created some cute tags using my Cricut and to tie those tags off, I just used a little bit of raffia. You could use ribbon here or even twine if you wanted to. And then these carrots make the great little display piece that you can put on your tear trays, on your coffee table, on your bookshelf, in your kitchen, wherever you want to display it. Let's make a cute garland using some cardstock. For this, you're gonna need orange cardstock and green. My green strips are cut to four inches long by half an inch wide. I'm taking each piece and folding it over and hot gluing the tips and then taking three of them together like this, hot gluing it and then giving it a hole punch. You can hole punch before or you can hole punch after, totally up to you. I'm using an eighth inch hole punch, just in case you're wondering about the small size of that hole. Once you've made these little stems, we're ready to grab our orange pieces. So take one of the orange pieces and hot glue your stem down to it at the end. Then take another orange piece, hot glue that on top of that one. And then when you pull them together to meet at the other end, it will kind of make this whole little, I don't know, heart-ish shape and that turns into your carrot. Then proceed to make however many that you want to. And I just use some twine to string mine up. I also added in a wooden bead in between each carrot just to give a little, a little something extra. You could add tassels to this if you wanted to, or you could just do a whole bunch of carrots, but it's definitely a cute and unique garland for spring. That's going to wrap up a variety of spring and Easter DIYs. Let me know down below which one of these was your favorite projects. Have you made any of these? I've got some more fun DIYs coming your way. Here are some more videos you might enjoy. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.